Hi, and welcome to my guide. Today we're going to be completing the quest Lunar Diplomacy. The quest requirements are Fremic Trials, Lossity, Room Mysteries, and Shiloh Village. Stat requirements are 40 defense, 49 fire making, 55 wood cutting, 60 mining, 61 crafting, and 65 magic. None of these stats are boostable. I just need it. 1800 bucks and a bullseye lantern with some oil inside, which you can easily buy from the Grand Exchange. Or you could buy an empty one at the Dorgashkan market. And I use some swamp tar, which you can pick up at the uh, Lumbridge Swamp, for example. And use it on the oil lamp still next to it to fill it with oil. Then use the empty bullseye lantern on it to fill it with oil. The next items are also needed to complete the second and the third part of this quest. Those are a pestle mortar, a draymond staff, 404 GP, a hammer, spade, any kind of pickaxe, and your best axe, as well as a guam and a marantel. For the recommended items, some weight reducing clothing, and depending on that, one or two stamina potions should be enough. Then also some food, armor, weapon and potions to kill at least 4 Comet 111 Sukwas that only use melee and can be stay spotted. We will be banking before we're going to be doing any kind of combat. Then also maybe some runes to cast some combat spells without the use of any books or staffs. Then also maybe some food to pass a damaging agility test. And finally, have at least four empty inventory slots. For the teleports, one teleport to an air, water, earth and fire runecraft altars. You can simply bring four teleportation methods to Edgeville and then use the abyss four times. If you're going to be using the abyss, be sure to also bring a pickaxe and an abyssal bracelet. If you don't want to use the abyss, then you'll need to bring the teleport to the air water, earth, and fire altar. You can simply teleport there by using a ring of elements or using a Felador teleport, drainer teleport, lumberyard teleport, and a dual ring teleport. Then also two teleports to Releka after we've already arrived at Releka and then one teleportation method away after the quest is completed. Where we can start this quest is on the most western dock of Releka. There, the most northern NPC, they'll find Loka Seerunner. Let's talk to him and select option 2, 1, 1. After speaking to him, he will not take us to the Pirate's Cove nor Lunar Isle. First, we will need to grab a Seal of Passage, which we can get from the Chieftain of Releka. So let's go southeast to the long hall, the main building of Releka, and near the bonfire, let's talk to Brent the Chieftain. Select the first option about the Seal of Passage, and he will give it to you for free. Next, let's return to Loka, select option 1, and he will take us to Pirate's Cove. He will not take us to Lunar Isle. Pirate's Cove is basically just a dead island, which only has level 23 pirates as well as Comet 44 Moss Giants. But we basically never have to go on to that island, like ever. Once we've arrived, let's climb up the ladder, then go a bit north and you'll find another ladder to go on to the ship. Go on the ship, and near the gangplank, there should be someone dressed in dark brown with a pirate hat, Captain Bentley. Let's talk to him and select option 4 to try to sail to Lunar Isle. And this will trigger a short animation. After this animation is over, let's talk to Captain Bentley once again to try one more time. After the second animation is over, we will need to go downstairs to talk to the navigator. So, to do so, go south, open the door, and next to you you'll find two stairs. Climb down any of them, then go south, 
they'll find in the western room. Bird's Eye Jack. Let's talk to him. After speaking to him, we will need to return to Captain Bentley upstairs. So do so. Talk to Captain Bentley. Select option 2. Maybe it's the navigator's fault. After this conversation is over, let's return to the navigator bird's eye jack one more time. And maybe it is the fault of a second bird's eye navigator. After this conversation is over, we want to return upstairs to the main deck. Go upstairs and then go north. Go north and you'll find two more doors. Open the first one, then open the second one and you'll find Bird's Eye Schultz. Talk to him. And after speaking to him, we will need to go back to Bird's Eye Jack. So, let's return south. But instead of going to Bird's Eye Jack, let's go north. And you'll find another stairs to go to basement 2B2. From there, go south. And go to the most southern room. And you'll find the cook, Beefy Burns. Let's talk to him. And after speaking to him, we will need to return to the main deck. So, let's go back upstairs north. Run south. In the center of the B1, go back upstairs to the main deck. Then go back to Captain Bentley and near him, near the door, they'll find two ladders going to the top floor. Do so and they'll find a guy dressed in blue, Letras Lee. Talk to him. After speaking to him, climb down any of the two stairs and then go into the most southern room of the main deck. There I'll find Davy Boy. Let's talk to him. After speaking to him, we will need to return to Letras Lee on the top floor of the top deck. There you will find a second NPC called a Cabin Boy. This is the NPC that has jinxed the ship. So, let's talk to the cabin boy and make sure that you have at least two empty inventory slots. Because the cabin boy will give you an emerald lens and an empty bullseye lantern. If you didn't bring an oil-filled lantern yourself, then you can go back to Beefy Burns in the kitchen area, search the barrels for some free swamp tar. Take those to an oil lamp still, either in Remington or in Dorgash Khan, and fill your empty lantern with some oil. Or if you've already brought one, then you can simply use the lantern lens that you've gotten from Cabin Boy on your oil-filled lantern and then light it using your dinner box. And you can drop the empty lantern as well as a taken out regular lantern lens. With the lit emerald lantern, let's use it on the southeastern cannon. And this will show the first jinx out of five. Space, one space to remove it. And there's just four more to go. Let's go downstairs and let's return to Cabin Boy in the southern room. And in the northwestern corner, let's use our emerald lantern on the wall chart on the wooden northern wall. Space, one space to remove the second jinx. Next, go back downstairs to B1, then go north, or the cannon deck, and go back to the lowest deck. There, go to the northwestern corner, just like three tiles, and I use your emerald lantern on the chest. Space, one, space. Next, let's run south to Beefy Birds. On our way, we'll be passing support 1, support 2, and the third support. Use our Emerald Lantern on it. On this support, we'll be able to use our Emerald Lantern on it. Space, one space to remove Jinx, 4 out of 5. 
Then the final one is just a couple of tiles southeast, where there is a massive double stacked crate. Use our emerald lantern on that crate to remove the final jinx. Next, let's return back to Captain Bentley. The jinx has been lifted and let's sail to Lunar Isle. This is already part one out of three of the quest completed. Let's talk to Captain Bentley and let's make our way to the island. Once we have arrived, let's go southwest and climb down the ladder. Then go down the second ladder just a bit west. And once we have touched land, let's go north, continue going north and go into town. This will trigger a short cutscene. After this cutscene is over, we will need to immediately run back south. We have to do this short animation of entering the town before we're able to talk to the Oranomancer. After the cutscene is over, let's exit town immediately and let's go south. We didn't really have to go into town, we just have to do the animation before we are able to continue with this quest. The first NPC that we see is a Comet 111 Suqua. This only uses melee, just use Protect from melee and pass it. Cross the bridge and then go east. And just in front of the Astral Runecraft altar, they'll find the Oranomancer dressed in white. Let's talk to her. And she will tell you that before we can make a compromise between the Moon Clan and the Fremenix, she will want you to learn about their way of life. And she will redirect you to Baba Yaga, who's located just north of the bank of the town. After speaking to her, let's return back into town. Use Protect from Ali if you're going to be passing in the attack range of a Sukwa. Once we're back in town, north of the bank there will be a gap in the fence. Go through that gap and there you'll find a moving house on giant chicken legs. Click on it to go inside and you'll find Baba Yaga. Select option 2 that the Orionomancer will need some help and she will help you. She will provide you with a file. Once you have the file, let's go to the bank and unnote our Guam and Merentil. And let's grab our Guam and Merentil. If you do not have these, you could kill some Sequoias north or south of the island and they will drop Guams and Merentils at a rate of like 1 in 2. Once you have your Guam and Merentil, let's go to any sink. The closest one would be next to the bank. Use your vial on it. Then your Guam and Merentil on the potion, providing 84 experience each. And once we have this, let's go to the bank. To prepare to kill a couple of Sukwas. I'm just gonna be using a safe spot with some firebolt. Then also be sure to grab your Dreaming Staff and all the teleportation methods to the four elemental rune crafting altars and one teleportation method back to Raleka to make our way back to Lunar Isle. And finally also be sure to bring your pestle and mortar. Well while I'm here I might as well just grab my spade, a hammer, pickaxe and axe. The emerald lantern can be dropped or deposited in your bank. Next, let's return to the Orinomancer. Next to the Orinomancer, we're gonna be killing some Sukwas. After we've obtained our lunar staff and our waking sleep potion, we will need to kill some more Sukwas, but we cannot start that part until we have completed our Lunar Staff, sadly enough. So, let's first go to the Orionomancer and there, go south. And they'll find a sack pile next to a barrel of rotten potatoes. Ooh, genie. 
this will be a nice safe spot. Kills a quas until you've received the one in two drop of their tooth. Also, be sure to keep the sequa heights. We'll be needing four later. But if you get the two before you have four heights, then that does not matter. We're going to be killing some more sequas later in this quest. Yes, once you got the Tsukwa Tooth, let's go back to the Ornamenta, and on our way there, let's grind the Tooth with Alpesal and Malta into dust, and then add this dust to the Guam Merentin Vial to make a Waking Sleep Potion. Then talk to the Ornamenta, and she will take this potion for safekeeping. The next part of this quest is that we'll need to upgrade the Draymond Staff into a Lunar Staff. And we can do this by using it on all the four elemental runecraft altars. The order does matter, and the first one we will have to go to is the air altar. So either go via the abyss, or make your way south of Valador with an air or elemental talisman or tiara. Then simply use your Draymond Staff on the runecraft altar to make it into a lunar staff, part 1. And the next one we'll have to go to is the Fire Altar. Either once again go via the Abyss, or make your way to the Fire Altar using the Ring of Elements or a Dual Ring Teleport. Enter the Mysterious Runes, and use the Lunar Staff Part 1 on the Fire Altar. Next is the Water Altar, which is located in the Lumbridge Swamp. Enter the Mysterious Runes, use Lunar Staff Part 2 on the thingy in the center. Then finally, the Earth Altar, which is located east of Varrock. Enter the Mysterious Ruins next to the Lumberyard, use Lunar Staff Part 3 on the stone in the center to get a Lunar Staff. Next, let's teleport back. Next, let's teleport back. <laughs> Next, let's teleport or make our way back to Raleke. Right click on Loker Scene Runner and let's make our way back to the Pirate's Cove. Once at Pirate Cove, let's climb up two ladders to go onto the ship and let's right click travel with Captain Bentley, the one with the pirate hat, back to Moon Clan Island. And once back on Moon Clan Island, let's return to the Ornamenta to hand over the Lunar Staff for safekeeping. And we can start our third section of this second part of this quest which is to gather the 9 Lunar Equipment Pieces. Let's deliver the Lunar Staff for safekeeping, and after she has taken the staff, let's make our way back into town. Next, what we'll need to do is to grab all the 9 Lunar Pieces. Before we're going to be doing that, let's first go to the bank and deposit all the useless items that we no longer need. Which is basically just the Runecraft related stuff. Your teleport and your tiaras. Just make sure that you bring your coins, hammer, spade and pickaxe. And what might also be helpful is some food, armor, weapon and potions to kill some more sequoias as well as having some empty inventory space. And one teleportation method to Raleka will also speed things up. Next, uh, let's go west. In front of the biggest building on the western side, they'll find Celine. Let's talk to her and select option 2. And she will tell you that she's an archaeologist and she has lost her lunar ring near some blue flowers. Next, 
Next, let's go a bit southwest. And in the alleyways west of the water source, there you'll find a Meteora. Let's talk to her. And she will tell you that the lunar amulet of her has been taken by some sequoias. Next, go north. And north of the big building with the ceremonial brazier, let's enter that building and there you'll find inside Pauline Polaris. Let's talk to her and select option 2, which is Pauline question mark. And after you've selected that, we will need to select Jane Blood Hagic Maid. However, the order of this selection is random for everyone. Just make sure that you select Jane Blood Hagic Maid. To get piece 1 out of 8. Next, let's return to the Orinomansa. On our way back to the Orinomansa, after crossing the bridge, and instead of going east, we will have to cross the western bridge. So here at the Sukwa guarding the bridge, instead of going east, let's go west, cross another bridge, keep going west until you see a bright blue flower near the western coast. Go stand on top of it and then dig with your spade. Next, click to continue and you will get the lunar ring, item 2 out of 8. Next, go back east and return to our safe spot where we've killed some sequoias. If you're using melee, then you can kill any sequoia. I just don't suggest to use the northern sequoias because they use magic and melee. I'm just gonna be using this sack pile as a safe spot again. Then just simply kill some more sequoias until you have four sequoia hides as well as Meteora's lost special tiara. This special tiara is also dropped at a rate of 1 in 2. Hey, special tiara, nice. Once we have this, let's go back north, back into town. Be sure to not die from the final sequoia. Let's go back into town and let's first tan these sequoia hides. To do so, let's enter the clothing store just south of the bank. And inside or in front of the shop, you'll find Rimae Silaris. Let's talk to her and select option 2. What do you know about ceremonial clothes? Then let's talk to her again after the conversation is over and select option 2 and then 1. Next, let's trade her and buy one needle and three thread. Then use your needle on the sequoia leather and select option 1. Option 2, make just one piece out of everything. Some gloves and some boots. Once we have these, let's go back to Meteora in the northwestern part of town to deliver her special tiara and she will trade this for the lunar amulet, I think. Next, let's go back to the bank and let's prepare to go to the mining area of this island. But we will need to pass a couple more sequoias and I already ran out of food. So let's go northeast. By the way, you may drop your needle and your thread. 
Let's pause some more sequoias north of town and then go east. Keep going east until you see a dungeon sign. Go into the outhouse looking uh, thing and then climb down the ladder. Then go south and west to the mining sign. There you'll find three stalagmites that you can mine. Click on it to get one lunar ore. If you're also looking to complete the Fremnic Exiles, then get three more. Once you've mined your lunar ore, let's teleport to Raleka and go to the furnace, which is in the most western building. You could technically use any furnace and anvil anywhere in Gilnor, but after we've made our lunar helm, we have to go back to Lunar Isle anyway, so I think using the furnace and the anvil in Raleka will be the fastest way. Smelt the lunar ore into a bar and then use the lunar bar on an anvil to make it into a lunar helm. Once you've made that helm, let's make our way back to Pirate Cove by traveling with Loka Sirana, then go up two ladders onto the ship and then travel with Captain Bentley to Lunar Isle. On Lunar Isle, let's make our way to the Ornamansa to deliver all eight pieces of the Lunar Outfit with at least three empty inventory slots as well. Because after we've delivered our eight pieces of Lunar Outfit, we will get them back, including our Lunar Staff, the Waking Sleep File, as well as a Kindling. So make sure that you have all the eight Lunar Pieces in your inventory with at least three empty inventory slots. You could drop something like Lunar Ore or food in front of her if you run out of space. Once you have all of that equipment, let's go to the bank, because we have just completed part 2 out of 3 of this quest. Let's go to the bank to prepare for part 3. On our way to the bank, let's make sure to equip full Lunars, the entire set. And also make sure that your quiver and your shield slot are empty. Next, let's go to the bank, open it and then deposit your entire inventory. Make sure that the first most important item is the seal of passage. If you do not take this from the bank, then we will not be able to use this bank anymore. So this is the most important item. Then also grab your tinderbox, your kindling, and your waking sleep vial. Then also bring your best available axe, as well as some runes to cast some combat spells against a combat 79. About 20 fire blast spells should be more than plenty. And then finally also bring like some food to pass a damaging agility course. Bring more food depending on your agility level. And then finally, make sure that you also have at least four empty inventory slots. Alright, once we are ready, let's go west into the big building on the western side with the ceremonial brazier. Let's use our tinderbox on it to light it. Then use our kindling on the waking sleep file to soak it. And I use a soaked kindling on the ceremonial brazier to enter the dream world. Leaving this dream world by any means, either from teleporting, using the book in the center, dying or a disconnection, then you will need to go back to the Orionomancer Mansa to get another waking sleep file and a kindling to be able to get back here. In this world, let's talk to the soul NPC, the ethereal man, and he will tell us that we'll need to complete six tests. 
Let's go take the first one, the eastern one, and step on that platform. The order that you do these tests in is just chosen by yourself. If you don't want to do this desk in particular, and you want to do this last, then that is just up to you. Once here, let's talk to the expert to start the agility test. We will need to raise the expert by taking the windy path with four hurdles. When the race starts, click on the spheres to try to jump over one of the four hurdles. If you happen to fail to jump over a hurdle, you will take a damage and you will have to try to jump over that one again. If you happen to fail three or more times in total, you cannot win this race anymore and I suggest you to simply give up and lose this race and try again on your next attempt. Once you've won the race, the expert will teleport you back to the main platform and this marks the completion of test 1 out of 7. After we've spoken to the ethereal man on the main platform to tell him what we have learned. This is also the first and the only test that will deal damage and also only requires our agility, so our summer pies are no longer needed. But I'm just gonna be keeping those. Next, I think I'm just going to be going clockwise, so the next platform is the pink one in the southeastern corner. Let's talk to this NPC, the numerator. And what we'll here need to do is to click or press the next two numbers in the sequence. The sequence of the numbers that are given by this NPC is random for everyone, and is also written in your chat box. The answers to all the sequences are currently on the screen. Complete five number sequences to complete this puzzle. After we have correctly answered five number sequences, we will be taken back to the main platform. Let's talk to the ethereal man to let him know what we have learned. Next, for the third test, let's go to the southeastern part once again, and let's take the green platform. And in my opinion, this test is the easiest one. Let's talk to the mimic, and he will start to teleport around this music note island. Follow him and then talk to it and it will do an emote. Copy the emote five times to complete this puzzle. The first emote is the cry emote, which is the first emote on the fifth row. Second is the bow emote, which is the third emote on the first row. Third is the dance emote, which is the first emote on the fourth row. Second to last is the wave emote, which is the second emote on the second row. And then lastly, for the fifth one, is the think emote, which is the first emote also on the second row. 
after we have successfully mimicked the five emotes, we will be taken back to the main platform. Let's talk to the Ethereal man to let him know what we have learned from this test. And let's go to the southwestern part. We've already completed three out of six puzzles. Let's go on to the yellow platform. And this one is another mathematical puzzle. Let's talk to Fluke and he will tell you a random number from 12 to 30. And what we'll need to do is to roll some dice so we can add up to that number. The two dice on the western side are either 5 or 2. The two dice on the center can only roll 6 or 1. And the two dice on the eastern side can only roll 3 or 4. The answers to all the numbers are currently also shown in the video as a picture. Just simply click on the dice that you will need to swap until you got that number. After you've gotten that number, all the dice will be reset to their original state. Once we have diced up 5 random numbers, we will be teleported back to the main platform. Once again, let's talk to the ethereal man to let him know what we have learned from the last puzzle. After we have done that, let's go to the northwestern part and jump onto the white platform to go to the second to last puzzle of this main platform. And this puzzle, in my opinion, is also going to take the longest. Because this puzzle is similar to the grid of the underground pass, except for this one is twice as long, but on the flip side, you do not take any damage. After speaking to the ethereal guide, jump on any of the dream puffs and see if you are able to stand on it via simply trial and error. However, from what I've seen, there are only six paths that have been recorded so far. So I would suggest you to try out these paths first, as other accounts have shown to also have gotten these paths before. If none of these recorded paths work for you, then it is simply going to be trial and error, unfortunately. Eventually, you will make it to the other side and finish puzzle 5 out of 7. This was a pretty easy one. On my tester account, before this one, this I was zigzagging literally across like an S. All right, let's return to the ethereal man to let him know that what we have learned, how useful it is remembering the past, knowing where you are and where you're going to make some good decisions. Next, let's finish this off with the Northwestern blue platform which is also a pretty chill puzzle, which is just going to be some woodcutting. Let's talk to Perceptive. And after speaking to him, let's make our way to the western side. 
You're chopping, right? And after speaking to him, it is going to be a wood cutting challenge. Let's select option one and let's make our way to the western side. Let's chop some of these dream trees. The first one to have 20 dream logs in the center is the winner of this challenge. The NPC deposits two logs in the center every two logs that it has chopped. But since that we have a pretty good axe with us and we're able to run to the center, there's basically no failing this challenge. Just chop some logs. Deposit them at the log pile in the center whenever your inventory is full. And do this until there are 20 logs in the center. All right, once you've deposited 20 dream logs in the center, that is the final puzzle in the dream world completed. Let's talk to the ethereal man in the center for the final second to last time. Because after speaking to him, we will need to simply select yes to fight ourselves. But instead of simply staff bashing each other, we have kind of cheated and brought in some runes. Cast some runes, maybe use a good prayer, and simply cast some spells onto yourself. Defeat the combat 79 to basically complete this quest. Once you've defeated me, let's talk to the ethereal man for the final time. And we have completed this challenge. Let's read the book in the center to return to reality. And after we have done that, maybe head into the bank to grab a stamina potion dose and a teleportation method away from Lunar Isle. And then continue east, then south to the other Nomancer next to the Astral Runecraft Altar to complete our quest. Completed the Lunar Diplomacy quest. You are awarded with two quest points, 5,000 magic and rune crafting experience. You have access to the Lunar Isle and Lunar Equipment. You have access to the Seal of Passage, which allows you to interact with the NPCs on the island. You also have access to the Lunar Spellbook by simply right-clicking on the Astral Runecraft Altar and select Pray. And you now also have access to the Astral Runecraft Altar to craft some Astral Runes if you want to. 
And finally, you've now also completed a quest requirement for the Fremenic Exiles and Dream Enter, as well as four hard or elite diary tasks. This was my guide how to complete the Dream Enter quest. Hopefully it has helped. Subscribe, rate and comment. I forgot my teleport, god damn it. Okay, thanks, bye.